Oh, hey. Oh, hey. How are you, man? Good. How are you? Good, good, good. Uh, it's a great day, man. Like, I'm super excited about today. Donnie Cates. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a advocate. Is that yeah. A, yeah, I'm a devil's advocate. He was back on Twitter today, which is super exciting for me. Uh, so I, I was really <laughs> like, that's a big deal for me, Todd. Like, that's a big deal. Great. I'm glad it's, I, I'm happy that you're happy. Please. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I mean, you've, you've been friends with me for a while now, five years, four years. No, it was during the pandemic, but yeah. So three, 20 mo- years? At, most, at least 20. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ever since the black plague. <laughs> um, so I'm super excited. It's been a rough week. Uh, my mother-in-law uh, had to randomly go to the hospital. We can't figure out what's going on. She passed out and I'm trying to figure out why. So it's been a rough oh, week, Lordy. but I'm excited to be here and talk about comics. Like, yeah. Like, uh, and talk about everything that's going on. We got a great guest. Uh, you know, this is, these are our last two episodes of what we've called season one. Yeah. Season one. So, uh, you know, we almost we, in the books. I'm, uh, I'm doing all right. Uh, but you know, I got this, I got this itch. And I think leveling up is the only thing that can. <laughs> <laughs> I got this fever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think we should let's let's level up. All right, let's scratch that edge, bro. Scratch that edge. All right. <laughs> so I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna need you in January to add season two on that thing. Yeah. Okay. Sure, I'll, it's, you, you'll forget, so I'll say yes. No, it's an exciting thing. Um, I mean, we're this close to being monetized in like five years. Oh, um, yeah, we're, yeah, we're trending that way for sure, we're trending, technically. Trending that way, uh, and we've got some great guests. Uh, we've got one lined up, and I, I asked a big pro um, uh, to, to join us for the second one in January, but we've got a, a great guest in the beginning. We don't need to reveal that now, but... That's a, but we've got a great guest. One of my one of my favorites is in the beginning of January, but also, yeah, we got a really dope one today. We do. You want to bring him on? You know what? We probably should. We probably should. <laughs> Hey. Hey. What's going on? <laughs> Not much. How's it going? Good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Thanks. You so, got, you there, there's a lot of books attached to your intro. So like a uh, little WWE running down the lane yeah. into the ring. Yeah, this is this is your Titan Tron. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um this is exciting for us because what we decided, um, Todd and I decided at the end of the year, and we're going to probably mix it up and add it to the whole mix next year, is to try to talk to a couple of publishers. We thought, you know, a lot of publishers have big plans for 2024. Let's talk to them in December. Uh, we had planned on doing a full month of December. Then we were like, oh, there's like that Christmas thing and like parties and like, let's just do a couple. <laughs> no, it's a good idea to talk to publishers for sure. Um, so and you, uh, and you are Black Box Comics, <laughs> right? He's the man. Uh, un- unlike uh, other publishers, like these are all your IPs, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Like well, you- that, uh, uh, Shino Kae, which is the uh, samurai fantasy that we have. That's the only one I published for someone else. Uh, that was their uh, concept. They created that. They own it 100. percent Okay, that's interesting. Because, yeah, I, I've i talked to throughout my YouTube interviewing career, uh, th- quite a few different writers uh, have mentioned how y- they've worked with you and the idea of the IP and building from, like, your vision for something. And that's a really interesting concept. I think it's really I- neat and... Uh, Probably, yeah, a little different than most publishers, I would say, these days. I mean, most are just trying to publish other people's create our own properties, which is great because that gives everybody an opportunity to bring their ideas to the table. But 
Um, even though these are my ideas and concepts, I give a lot of leniency to writers to help develop this and, and make it what it is. Um, and I'm sure you guys know Brian Hawkins, Jay Sandlin, you probably know. Yeah. So like all of them have done a fantastic job. Eric Palicki, Jonathan Hedwig. Uh, so I, I, you know, I've been lucky to work with really good people. Um, and we all linked up and, and then we're able to work really effectively with without issue. So um, that's awesome. And, and I, I, it I've shows. personally only heard that it's a positive interaction too, which is really Thanks, big. I appreciate it. I'm glad so to hear that. That's huge. Like that's, you don't hear that all the time. <laughs> you to hear that from others, right? Like it's one yeah. thing they tell you was a great experience, right. but even when they tell you that, so I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's an interesting concept and I think, uh, I think you have a really good ear on people who have a voice, uh, in, in the comic industry, people who, who have a unique voice, uh, like Jay and Jonathan Hendrick and, and Brian Hawkins, uh, all of those guys are known for the, their voice in the comic industry. Like they, even though they're rookies, they they have a good voice and you're picking them up when they're strong, you know, yeah. coming off of stuff, you tend to get them right after, you know, you got Jonathan right after the recount, Brian, you got him like right before, I think you got him, was it right after or right before Black Cotton? Before. Yeah, right, right before Black Cotton, um, you know, and Jay had just came off of uh, his, uh, I think it was his Mad Cave work, right? Yes, he yeah. did. Um, I can't remember the name. I, of the I don't remember it either. That's why I just yeah. said Mad Cave. <laughs> I was really hoping someone else would remember. Uh, yeah, he heard, yeah, as soon as he did that, he was actually referred to us by Brian, and Brian was referred to us by Ramel Hill. I don't know if you know Ramel. I do know Ramel Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like one person referred the other and it just, everything worked out. It clicked. And, uh, That's cool. you know, one good person referred another good person. Mm -hmm. right. Jonathan got referred to me by, uh, Bueller. I don't know if you know comics or Bueller. Do. We have the same first name. We have to know each other. Right. So he referred Jonathan and, uh, I read some of his stuff and I thought it was good. And then we, we, we found the right title for him to work on because he was telling me he wanted to work on something that's a, a horror type of book. So, Three awesome. matches, the match for him. Very cool. uh, well, and that's not even, we're not even counting the like, you know, big levels. You've got Chuck Dixon who worked on a book for you. You've got uh, somebody coming up that we'll mention in a little bit. Uh, yep. Actually, you mentioned it live a couple weeks ago. So I guess we can say D Daniel Chaucer, GJ Chaucer. Dan, uh, we also work with Kevin Grievous. I don't know if you know him. You should. You know Kevin Grievous, yeah. From Underworld. Uh, he did Cycle List for us. So that was the. Chuck did the second title for us, which was Militia. Kevin did the third title, right? He did Psycho List. Um, so what, what was number one? What was the first one you did? IT. Uh, and that that team was mostly guys from uh, DC Comics, like Scott McDaniel, Andy Owens, uh, Tio Gonzalez. I think he worked for like Aspen and a few others. He's a really good colorist. Uh, Taylor Esposito, he's worked for DC. He's a fantastic letterer. Yeah, that's like okay. my favorite letterer in the game, right? Of yeah, Justin Birch. Hold on. Scott McDaniel's the, the Nightwing artist. He, he's the artist of that? Yes. I was not familiar that that he was on. I saw the McDaniels. I, I'm not familiar with IT. I, got, I started picking you up in like 2021, 2022. Okay. So when did this come out? That was March 2017. That was the first issue, our first title. So it's the flagship title. And the reason I even did that, some people think I'm crazy, but I worked in banking for like 18 years, roughly. Uh, so I had a very high level position at a few banks. And uh, I just thought the concept was something easy for me to adapt into comics and something that I thought would be very different. And that's part of what I want to do with Black Box is just have very different uh, ideas and heroes that present to people. Uh, so I, I don't think anything like IT has been done. Um, we definitely see it, you know, at some point, hopefully as a show, right? Like that's the big dream for everybody. Right. And I, I think that would be a really cool show to give people an inside look on how banking works. Yeah. I mean, and those are, those are great people. Uh, I mean, Scott McCann is one of my favorite artists of all time. Like he's amazing uh, to do stuff with. So that's, that's so important. In fact, we were just talking to him when we, we had DJ DJ on um, DG on the other day. We were talking about his how drastically those that end arc of Daredevil art style is for for Scott McDaniel's. Like, 
how how he can just flip and do a completely different art style from this very clean Nightwing from where he ended with uh, you know Tree of Knowledge and all that. Yeah, interesting enough that yeah, I'm sure you know Dan just launched uh, another Daredevil series. Yeah, yeah, Black Armor. Yeah, continuing. Yeah, the original the Fall from Grace series, which is. It's, a, it's 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 interesting. I definitely want to pick it up and read it and support them. Uh, I agree. It was good. I liked I it. Picked up. I picked up the cover by Bagley. So I thought nice. that was pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, I grabbed it and I I liked it. But I also I have fonder feelings about that than I I found working at the comic book shop. People have different feelings about that. Run than, <laughs> than I do. <laughs> well, you read it all at once, so you were right. impacted in feeling it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was always mixed feelings about that series, about the the suit and stuff. Uh -huh. Different, There's different strong feelings. feelings. People were ready. It's not comic related, but I but I feel my best example is like the How I Met Your Mother ending. How that like like has people like I did not like watched that. it. From the beginning and didn't binge it, have no problem with that ending because we've yep. got to like live it's not that the same experience. commitment, right? If you binged it though, there is no way you're gonna like that ending. Right. <laughs> so, it's your commitment. Um, wow, I'm so gonna what, have to this up. Yeah, so me too because this was this was before it was on my radar, and now I'm very interested. That sounds really cool. Uh, what came after, or maybe switch it up a little bit. What did you learn? From this, if this was your first foray, you're going from banking to comic books. That had to be quite the transition. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, how did you get people's? How did you reach out? How did the, how did you even get the first like connections? Because now so, you could be like, "Hey, black box." I mean, I have this resume. As a kid, like many of us, um, and I kind of disappeared from that for a while but i came back to it um i started collecting the books again and i started collecting art art became a really big thing for me and i got connected with a lot of artists because of that um and you know from that that kind of made it easy for me to branch out and find artists to work on the books that we've done um i didn't know that that was going to transition to that but it did and, and it worked yeah. out and th things are meant to be sometimes right yeah. uh but yeah like Banking's different, man. I mean, you you have a set time to, to be in, a set time to be out. Everything's there. Uh, yeah. You have deadlines. Uh, not that you don't have them in comics, but when you, the publisher, you kind of set the deadline, so you get to cheat a little bit. There's never delays or anything in comics. That's bananas. But, uh, you know, for me, I, I'm working on this stuff, I feel like, 24-7. I'm up sometimes 2 in the morning or 3 in the morning working with people who are maybe overseas. Um, and sure. I'll do that because I don't want them to have to wait another day. So I, I make sure I'm, I'm up, I review it, edit, approve, and let them keep working. So the next day there's more stuff done. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm very adamant about getting stuff done. Um, yeah. There's like, you know, 15 titles that we're working on. So I, I, I don't want to skip a beat. I want to make sure I always have something ready. And, and things happen, right? Somebody could get sick things I mean, for whatever other reason and multiple reasons of why people might drop off or so, you know, I just, I know I have something in the wing ready to go. Yeah. What was it like, uh, finding a printer for the first time for your comics? Um, I actually was able to get a list of printers at the time. So that made it really easy for me. And I just shopped around. I probably must have called like, I don't know, at least 20 to 30 different printers and got prices and, trying to get the times that they, how quickly they could get things delivered, um, quality of paper. They would send me samples. Sure. Um, so if you guys obviously have our books, I, I mean, I think we have some mm -hmm. of the best paper. Uh, it's, so we, we definitely have a good, nice. you know, and, and I'm not cheap on the weight of the paper. I, I want to make sure people have something good that they're holding. They're happy about yeah, that, it's definitely not newspaper. That's got a solid GSM to it. It's, they are very nice. And, yeah, that's awesome. That's interesting. I just that that transition is very interesting to me oh, because it's, it's like Chichester. What was he doing? He was doing something to I marketing, I believe. Yeah, right. mar that was it. Marketing. That's right. And it's just it's interesting. I always like to. That's a and, and the other difference. thing is too. What, what I find like challenging is that like being in this field is you kind of have to find your own uh, motivation when you get up 
every day to to get started right because it's easier to slack when you're at home you know with like you want to snack on something you might want to watch a show you might whatever yeah. TV's and right there. you can be just distracted from so many things um i just think you have to like set a time and just stick to it so i i try to use my nine to five but i always go well beyond that because i know that people might send stuff at 10 at night or like i said two in the morning and then i just yeah. I'm just working around the clock, basically. Yeah. But when you enjoy it, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's That's easy. Nice. That is yeah, a I, absolutely. As being a writer, you know, I definitely feel that, you know, especially it's really hard because some days I'll write very, very little. Like I have big spurts, like, but I have to be ready for when I'm ready to write. So when I'm ready to write, I'll, I'll, I'll put out like 15 pages in like six hours or so. Yeah. But um, that's not every day. It's I've got so I've got to keep going every day to go. Is this going to be the six hour day or is this going to be the the three or four pages day? Use it, man. Just go all the way. <laughs> you know, I always hit my deadlines, but it's just getting figuring out when what day is that going to be the 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 good day where I can do it. And I have I have ADD, so I open up. Unlike most people, I work on several scripts at the same time instead of jumping around the scene. I'll do a scene here and a scene here and like jump around. It's crazy. Um, so uh, what's next? So after IT, what was after that? Militia. Militia. So that was working with the legendary Chuck. Dick. So you spared no expense when you started out. Like you're like, I'm going to start doing books and I'm going to get the, the literally best the nineties has to offer. Right. I mean, bring people who know what they're doing, man. I mean, know it better than you. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know, you get to learn from all of these people, and 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 I learn something from everybody, and, and hopefully, uh, they 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 get the same thing back from me. Um, you, you can learn from the pros that have been around forever, but even from people who just started in the game, there's something to gain from everybody, and uh, that's that's a good thing to, to have within the group. Now, now, was this stuff? Because I've known Chuck Dixon for several years, and he's very military focused. He loves working with the military. Loves writing military books. Was this right. his idea, or did you know that about him? And then when you came, was, I mean, the concept is my idea, but uh, when I pitched it to him, like we, we talked about his background a little bit, and you know, his father served in the military, and obviously he's been writing this stuff like his whole life. Um, I think he wrote for Stallone. He did the expendable graphic novel. Right. I'm not sure if he worked on the scripts for the script uh, for the movies. I, I thought I heard someone say that, uh, but um, he is developing uh, one of his his own projects with Stallone. Right. So, but you know, Chuck Chuck knows the industry inside out. He's been writing for a long time, and again, he knows the military stuff really well. And he was a good fit. That, you know. Yeah, not a lot of people know that he writes, uh, even till probably about two years ago, he was still writing like Marvel and DC stuff, but it's exclusive to the military. They do like one shot little things that are really hard to get. I, I know a couple of friends who've worked on them. Uh, and then, you know, even I've been in comics since 2003, like in 2006 or seven, he was writing World War II fighter plane stories. Like all his indie stuff was like, all these unmarketable things, <laughs> like like not to be offensive to Chuck, but all these unmarketable. But that's what he likes to write. It was called the Ghost Fleet, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I know he's worked on indies. I haven't like followed exactly what he's been doing. Um, I just knew of the Stallone thing. I saw that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's what he loves. So like, if he enjoys it, you know, let him keep enjoying it. You know. And what's but, the prim what's the premise of Militia? Uh, it's a, the, a female in the military. So her perspective in being in the military, every time we talk about military, we always talk about the guys mm -hmm. and I thought it'd be cool to see the challenges of a female in the military. Um, she has her own unit and uh, she has a female unit where they go and they save, let's say kids or women in certain countries that will only speak to the female soldiers where they won't speak to the male soldiers. So technically she could only really save them. Um, so I, I thought that was cool, a cool take. Uh, yeah, on sorry, I know military is probably one of the tougher uh, genres to be like selling in comics. Uh, Garth does okay. I just thought that was just a cool take to have. And, uh, I thought it did yeah. really well for us. You know, that's awesome. I, I there's definitely it's it's the geek thing. Like 
I, I'm really I'm really into football and stats and things like that, but I also like comics. I feel like nerds always have the two things, and there's lots of nerds who are like military guys and then also comics. I mean, guys. people don't realize how many people from the military love mm -hmm. comics. Right. There's so oh, many. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so I mean, I have a lot of them that, that are our fans that that have bought militia, but they ended up buying a lot of our other titles, which is cool. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I I don't Great. know if you know this, but Jonathan Hendricks lives in my neighborhood. Like yep. he lives here. Like so, we we talk. Uh, we we used to go out to lunch pretty often. We haven't in a while, but um, the recount had such a big military fan base just because of of what it is and like seeing those people. Like they don't even look at my books. Like they're not interested. Like they, it needs to be somewhat military focused, and it's it's really interesting. And then because he's former military, like he gets it and, uh, and having that. They're, they're such and an it gives that lively feel for sure. It makes a difference, man. It really does. Yeah. Somebody like me writing military book versus Jonathan or Chuck is like right. <laughs> different. There's no match to it, right? I'm like, surprised the military is not more into Granite State Punk, but right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> strange. <laughs> so, what came after Militia? Cyclist. And the premise of that is basically a former FBI agent that becomes a therapist gets involved in his patients' lives, and then he gets called back for a special case. So I, I thought that'd be really cool, uh, really having therapy who <laughs> really just dives into your personal life outside of what you talk about in the office and gets involved. And people have said that it gives them like a Dexter, Ray Donovan vibe, hmm. something along those lines. So I, I, I thought it, I would love to see that as a show. I think it'd be a great kind of show. I love and this cover. Isn't there a season two starting of this, or or, or are you resoliciting it? Um, it might be volume two. Listed it. Yeah. I'd have to check. I thought I saw something from Kevin the other day talking about it. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> so interesting. But yeah, that that issue one and issue two sold out before it hit stores, so that was a big hit for us. And oh, nice! Wow. Yeah, is that, and that's is that the first time that happened after the? Yeah, started? I mean, that was the third title. Yeah, that was the first time that we had like a quick sellout like that. Um, it, it was crazy. You, I mean, do you know what sparked it? I I don't know. I mean, it could be speculators. Uh, that that's my assumption, but I mean, it's also that every title that we've been coming out with outsells the previous title, mm. nice. so a, a good um, sign of growth health healthy growth right like it's little by little is but it's that a stat to today um everything all the way up to dream master after like dream master was a huge hit and so was ninja kaidan uh, but then we took a little bit of a, a break in between and then empath came out which was last mm -hmm. month mm -hmm. um, so empath didn't sell quite as much as dream master but it still did very well nice and uh cool. So, and but, comics are down. Indie comics are down across the board. So you're in good company. Every company I talk to are, are down across the board. Yeah, I mean, the market has come down a little bit, I believe. Uh, a lot of shops have closed up. I don't know if you, you guys have seen how many shops have closed, but no. quite a lot. Is it a lot? A lot in the last couple of months. I would probably say like a dozen at least. Oh, no. That's so sad. Yeah. Like, was, that's a whole community losing comics. That is, it's so sad. Yeah, there's a couple in Cali that closed. There was one in uh, upstate. Um, they had two shops, two locations. They closed. Pulp Seven One Six. Who else? Um, there was one here in Queens, New York. Um, it's a whole bunch of them. I, I, I don't have the list with me, but I, a wow. couple, of, one or two in Florida. So well, it's just you, you know it's, it's bad too. Sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. I said, you know, it's bad too if they're canceling before Christmas, right? They get a big jump at Christmas, so you know it's bad. Like they have yeah, to. Close. Yeah, so it's I mean, it's a little concerning, but I mean, there's there's probably just an adjustment needed within the market. Maybe you know, maybe finding a better place, a uh, better price. It's also just been the it's rent. Been, it, it ran hot for a while. It did, um, but I mean, I know there's a little bit of a the economy thing, right? People are scared right now. They're afraid to spend. Uh, so. I mean, we'll see what's going to happen. I mean, hopefully next year will be better. Yeah. Hey. Well, I'm glad it's still doing well, though. So, yeah. For us, we're doing good. I mean, so I'm happy with what we've been doing. Yeah, that's awesome. 
so it's your third title. You sold out for the first time before hitting the actual market and going out. Did you, what happened then? Were you, I mean, you, you've already done second printings, obviously. Yeah, we did a second printing of issue one and two. We had to. I mean, there was getting yeah. bombarded with requests. So so we did that. Um, and then slowly, you know, we increased our print runs to make sure that we have what's being asked for. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of, I think, titles now. Like, you know, we're very, like, low on. We don't probably have a lot left. So you you adjust you know you see where what what the sales are and you adjust if you need to come up or down with your print you know and then, uh, did you because at this point now it's like i'm assuming the first one you're not 100% sure how well it's going to go it's a it's a new venture you're seeing you're ready to like put the work in and everything but you still you don't know where it's going second one does even better third one sells out before it even goes do you start What's that feeling? Like, do you start panicking? Cause it's like, Oh no, it's like, it, it's becoming a snowball. Do you look at like adding more people? What, what's your like mindset as like you're hitting this growth that. I just try to look at the market. I look at the economy. I look at everything to see what would be the right move for the next title, next issue. Um, so the title, I believe that came out after that was project Icarus. Sure. Yeah. Was it Icarus? It was Cycle? Yeah, I believe it was Project Icarus. Um, and, and, and you'll know, you get an idea, right? Like when you see Ninja Kaidan and Dream Master, like I knew right away those were uh, going to be something that everybody really wanted. Um, and Icarus was a really good book. Um, so we kept the numbers higher than Cyclist because obviously we just sold out on issue one and two and we wanted to be prepared to have enough to go around for everybody on that. Um, and at the same time, it's still nothing like it's not like you're printing 30,000 copies. It's still mm -hmm. print run at the end of the day, but but enough to get your fans in and have everyone enjoy the series. Yeah. That's and that awesome. one was written by uh, Andy Owens. So Andy's been working for Marvel DC for probably 25, 30 years. A long time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Patrick Blaine is, was the artist. He worked for Top Cow and a few other indies. Uh, I think he worked. He was working on Predator, I believe, for Dark Horse, but I don't believe that came out. Hmm. Uh, but really good artist. Um, and he paint like digitally painted all the covers, which I thought was cool, and it gave it a different look from everything else that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's something that I do focus on, is trying to make sure that each series, each title has its own unique look. Yeah, make sure it has its own feel. And then at this point, are you has like the ideas of like an interconnected world start coming in oh, yeah. or like, is that the, I think I meant to ask this like in the first or second, but <laughs> like how early on was like the BCU, uh, <laughs> an idea? Well, we, we did a little cameo in Icarus where the, um, character from it goes for a little yes. bit. It's only for like, uh, I think it's like one or two panels or something like that. Sure. But there's a little, a little, 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 yeah, pepper it in. <laughs> yeah, but there's definitely a much bigger plan um, I'm working on. And uh, you'll see, like, Empath has a little bit of a surprise at the end of the series. Cool. Um, and then you'll see where that leads into the other series and there's other surprises. I got um, my theory, but I won't make you have to say. Yeah, it's but really I got wrong on, on in my life. head. It's, it's all in my head, but I got like a big cloud with everything connecting one to the other. Awesome. And the thing is, like, none of them are. They're not forced. They they makes a lot of sense as to why they connect. And when you pick them up and read them, you'll see why and be like, it's pretty interesting the way I, the way I planned. So it. far, it doesn't seem like it's you don't need to like they're all still standalone. <laughs> Which yeah, is cool, yeah. which is nice. Like that's. I mean, I, I want to have the first volume or two as a standalone just to focus on the main character, build the supporting characters, and, and this way everybody knows what that series is about. Right. And then afterwards, you could kind of have some people pop in and out. Um, you know, like making either cameos or just like appearances on several pages, but not take away from the main character. Yeah. Uh, I would say more, a little more in the distant future where we could do like a big event. Yeah. 
big team up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so after Project Echoes, what do we have? Oh, we did get the pitch. Pitch it for people who don't know. What's oh, fun? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, basically, they're experiment- experimenting on prisoners uh, that end up getting, like, enhanced powers. And uh, the main character, Max, has to go after them and either capture or kill. Um, mm. And more often than not, it, it, it's going to be killed. So it, it, it's a pretty good book uh, a lot of a lot of battle scenes um andy wrote in he's has at least one to two battle scenes in every two every issue nice. uh, and you know patrick just told told the stories really well especially with the battling the action scenes are great so um i i thought that was a really good book um that's awesome. there's a connection to that to another future title so uh, that'll Ooh, nice i'm working on it now cool. actually we're almost done with that volume nice and, and do, you, do you not solicit until they're done? Do you do all five before you even solicit? Well, usually. I, I mean, I, I've done it a few times where it's like on issue three or four is done. But typically I like to wait till the whole series, the whole five issue arc is done and then let it fly. Be absolutely I, sure that it's going to happen. You guys follow us, so I'm sure you see that. We, we only do like one or two titles a month. Mm-hmm. Right. And the reason is to focus on and not... Uh, overwhelm readers or overwhelm comic shops with titles. I, I don't think the market is there to put out, you know, and, it, and make sure that you can keep up. So when you want to do the bigger things, right? It's not like oh, it's a fifth book. <laughs> I mean, like, I can even launch like five or ten titles right now if I wanted to, but that's a lot. I just don't think the market is there for that. You know? Yeah, I think that's smart, and I especially just for indies and stuff like that. Yeah. it's it makes sure that. The people who are reading will read everything, and when you want to do your big thing and bring everything like together or your big event, people will be like, right, up on it and then ready. Yeah, I mean, I think it's slow and steady growth, and then you let everybody get a chance at every series. I mean, if you put out too many, they're gonna pick maybe one mm-hmm. or two, and then they'll miss out on everything else. You know, yeah, so they'll I pick the cover like, that they like most, and then right there it is. <laughs> right. Well, I also think it helps the uh, the uh, as a writer. It also helps the writer. Like this is our time. You're we're being promoted. The books being promoted. Everything connected. The artists and times like that team's important. You know, I have books with Scout and other companies, and like I'm I'm one of twenty that came out that month. Right? It's really hard, and I'm not even judging them or saying bad things. It's just really hard for them to go. All right, this one's get. It's hard to make everyone feel special when there's twenty of them, mm. <laughs> right? I mean, the cool thing is like some of the guys that have uh, like worked on some of these titles, like on Militia was Jethro Morales. Right. And I, I think right after he did that with us, I, I believe he went on to work with Marvel. Nice. And I think the next title we're about to talk about is Bigs and Tiny. Yeah, which is great. Uh, Federico Sabatini, he's worked on uh, Spider-Man, Moon Knight. Um, I think he did a cover for a couple of like the big image books. Right. Um, so, yeah, Federico was fun to work with. I, I let him have a blast with that. It, it was just uh, imagine you and your best friend just being irresponsible heroes. <laughs> it, it, it's a lot of just banter back and forth, and it, it probably is the way we would be if really we really were heroes. You know what I mean? We, we'd have a lot of fun with it. Uh, we'd mess with each other. Uh, yeah, you give each other crap, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, it's just a fun book, and I think that that book came out around uh, during COVID. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a good thing because I think people needed something to laugh about in that. This, I think this going back because it's. I think this is my first black box book that I read. Okay. I really enjoyed it. It was different, and I remember because I was reading everything during the pandemic. I was just like, "Oh, there's a book to read. I need to fill a lot of time." <laughs> <laughs> and I really, I remember just really enjoying it, and then it went from there, which is really cool. Yeah, I mean, we did really good during the pandemic. We got a ton of uh, sales, website sales, and, and we kept going. I mean, we were still doing what we were doing. We didn't slow down at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, we're not putting out ten or twenty books, so we didn't have to slow down. You know, yeah. so that pace just worked perfectly for us. That's awesome. That's that's good. I mean, it, I feel like you hear it's either yeah. like it was sci-fi really, really an awful in that, which I thought was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Really no, cool. I I thought it was good. This is the first book that I heard about Black Box. It wasn't the first one I read. I didn't read it till after, 
I think I just read it. Uh, I probably read it right about the time Dream Master came out. I, I got that back issues. But this is the first book where a Black Box Comics logo was on it that I was like, what is this? And again, probably there was less books on the shelf. So your book stood out because there was not a lot coming in, you know. So the the couple of copies that everyone got, you know, was there. And I'm I'm a Wednesday warrior. I'm there at 11, you know, when it opens, you know. Yeah, that, that one was written by me and Ramel. Uh, we both wrote issue one. Uh, but I just I couldn't keep up because I just had so much work to do on the back end with all this stuff. So I let him finish out the series and he did a great job on that. That's cool. Nice. What's next after Big and Tiny? Bigs and Tiny. Big and Tiny, yeah. Was it, uh, I believe it was Devil's Dominion. Oh. Right? Yeah. It's on the list on that photo grid I gave you guys. It's a, oh, that's the order list? Yeah. That's I, the order <laughs> list? Oh, man. I made my own because I'm yeah. like that. <laughs> You got that one? It's loading. Okay. <laughs> Devil's yeah, Dominion. Devil's Dominion. You got it. Yeah, it was Devil's Dominion, which was Brian uh, Hawkins. Brian Hawkins. Oh yeah, we we know this one. Well, I know it. I don't know. Do you do you know it? Do I know this Brian Hawkins <laughs> title? Yes, yes, I do. So yeah, I mean that that was Brian's first in store published book uh, and me and him went back and forth you know on, on calls on emails and chat and you know we we nailed what the storyline was going to be and you know the end result of that really showed i mean I, even the whole team every time i talk to them whether it's the colorist or the artist like they're really in love with the character right. um, so if you're following that, we're, we're, I'll give you a little spoiler. Volume two is going to come out next year along with volume three. So both hey. volumes are complete. So we have 10 straight issues of that coming out. I may have already known that, but I'm very that, excited That may be what it. I was remembering <laughs> instead of the other, because Brian Hawkins and I uh, talked. Maybe that's what I was remembering. Same. I, yeah. I might have heard about this, and I'm, I'm excited. I have a... I didn't do my normal prep because I was busy today, but I have, I may or may not have all the issues signed by uh, Ryan cool. Hawkins in my home. Right That's now, cool. <laughs> which was exciting. Brian's a good uh, When Empath was announced, I messaged Brian Hawkins and I made fun of him a little bit. I was like, Hey, um, what's going on with a uh, black box? Why is he only giving you just regular people? Like, why don't you get like the cool superheroes? Or he's like, no, that's what I chew. <laughs> <a> <laughs> I'm sorry, Brian. I wasn't trying to offend you. <laughs> oh, what the heck? He's a very good writer. I mean, I really yes. like him in that space though, because I think he knows how to develop characters. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the human side of it, right? Like the superhero side is, is, is a little different and it's more action packed and, Depending on what it is, right? Cape, a cape flying type of hero. Yep. But he really dives into the human condition. Mm -hmm. uh, what people would do. Um, and he builds the supporting cast really well. Mm -hmm. He makes them very interesting. So I, I just, I like him in that space. He did um, Empath, Devil's Dominion, and uh, Dr. Wilder. Those are the three titles that worked out for us. But that's not next. Doctor Doctor no, Wilder that, isn't next. The next one is so Devil's Dominion. We all know what that's about, right? Oh yeah, we just, <laughs> uh, we, we should tell the uh, the audience, but uh, me and, me and, <laughs> we know. Yeah, we're all we're all set, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it's it's uh it's just like the famous saying of we all have demons, and originally that was going to be the title it was going to be we all have demons. And then I was like, I don't know if that's too long or not. Um, and then it was going to be between that and Devil's Dominion. So I, I chose to go with Devil's Dominion. So I thought that'd be interesting. We have De the Devil's one of, one of the main characters in it. Uh, he's going to probably play a role with some of the other titles. Uh, but I, I thought her having a demon, going after other people with demons, mm -hmm. uh, basically... Uh, breaking the deal that she had with the devil and the reason why he gave it to her was to do bad. So I, I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah. And it's good to read. And it's just like what you said. It's the whole, the human factor of it all. It's, it, it really hits. 
and Brian nailed it. You know what I mean? None of us are perfect and we have our good and bad days. Right. So I, I thought playing off of the demon thing is, is a cool concept to have. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, that's I mean, that's definitely good. playing a Brian's strength. You know, we look at uh, black cotton or look at vineyard, you know, it's, they're all human element stories. Right. And, uh, one of the things that I think Brian does, uh, and I don't tell him this cause I, I don't want to give him an ego, but he's uh He's not like a normal writer. So a normal writer, what I find in Texas, uh, the, a normal writer writes to what's the reader reader going to experience with this, where he's like, what is the character going to experience through this? Yeah. I think that that's the way to do it. And I think once you get past being a rookie writer, that's that's what you do, right? You, the first one is starting out, how does the reader respond to this? But he's always been good at how does the character respond to this, the reader secondary, not, not that secondary is importance, but like to tell the story, what's that character's arc? is far more important than what the reader gets out of it or what they're going to glimpse from it, you know? Right. All right. That's the way to go. I mean, you, you can't make every reader happy. Sure. You have different expectations. So there's no one answer to, to that, but there is an answer to what you're trying to build within the story. Right. So sticking to that is, is the way to go. Yeah. So definitely a good point uh, about his approach for sure. Yeah. I like that. I'm, I'll just, I'll, I'll send this to him later. I won't, I won't, I won't tell him. I'll have you tell him. <laughs> and then next up. Gin Hunter. That's, that's an awesome book too. Yeah. That this is uh, prior to uh, dream. Out, this was my favorite. I really love this concept. Uh, and even like, you know, your, your teams, most of your books are written where they're kind of like little one shots. You're right. There's an overarching story, but they're kind of one shots, which is, which I love. Like I, all the little like side adventures as they're going through, I was like, I want to spend more time with this little side adventure, you know? Yeah. So that, that team was Jay Sandlin and Fabricio Cosentino, who basically did art colors, uh, letters, by the way, like he was just, Impressive a beast like Killed he did too yeah yeah i mean it, the art is amazing the colors are amazing I, he did a great job and and jay was fantastic in uh the approach he took and what he wrote uh he put in like like because we talked about a lot of different things and he included like the council um uh, that gave her somewhere where she had to answer to and, and gave that challenge uh you know, and the basic concept of it is be careful what you wish for, right? And she's a genie bounty hunter going after genies, giving bad wishes to people. And things don't always turn out the way you wish for things. It's it's you have to actually work for it, right? There's no easy, easy way to do things. Everybody wants to win the lotto. Everybody wants things to happen in the instant, but it takes time. So that cover right there on that issue, that was a really great issue and talks about that the samurai uh that was involved in that um you read it so you know what happened as i, I may have picked out when i do these graphics i may pick out my favorite either <laughs> covers from things sometimes it's both uh so yeah no this is well and the designs really for the characters in this are every single one like tells a story like every design you're just like I want to know more about that character. Look at that design. I want to know more about that character. You know, they're interesting. I mean, the whole council is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, the person that she has a relationship with is with interesting, and and, and that will will come out in the future uh, even more so. Uh, we have a volume two script done. It's just uh, the timing with with the artist didn't work out. So I don't know if I'm gonna. I'll probably end up moving on from him, um, unfortunately, but. But we'll get it. We'll get it going. Nice. nice. That happens. But yeah, no, the story goes on. <laughs> and then you have your creator own one here where the, yeah. the gentleman. So tell us how this came about. They uh, Neil is who's the writer. He pitched it to me. Um, so, you know, I, I gave it a shot. I looked through it. I, I really like the art. Um, and the arts by Gus Malk, who's like uh, up and coming artist a lot of people are finding out about him now and he's really fantastic great guy the whole team was actually very nice to deal with and easy to deal with so um and they they, they had a good um uh, team teamwork within themselves you know like when they told a person told me something everyone else was following suit and getting things done timely uh, 
and I, I just I really enjoyed that series when I read it and, and enjoyed the art. So I was like, I'm gonna give it a shot and publish something for someone else. Um, I don't have the time to publish other people's titles. I wish I did. I just don't. Um, so that's why I kind of like just focus on my own stuff. Um, but I was happy I did that one for sure. And they did a volume two, and uh, I believe they're planning a volume three as well. Nice. And those will come out through Black Box as well. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. That's neat. So it's this. La- it's like this. You you don't plan on doing more of this in the future, but you keep keep it going while it's going. I mean, yeah, because I already started it, right? And it and it was good, and it was finish it. Yeah. So yeah, there's no reason to like stop that. I mean, I, I would hate to do that, mm-hmm. but. To take on something else, I have to know I can dedicate the time to it. Yeah, I want to. I really want everybody to succeed, especially if you're going to be publishing with me, whether you're creator-owned or working on one of my stuff. I want to make sure that it succeeds. So, yeah, I'll make sure I give it the proper time. That's neat. Did you? Was there any? You said it went really well. Did you? Uh, well, when that still, came out again, that uh, each, like I said, each book outsold the previous. That was our highest and that seller. Still did it. That's cool. So it still went well for you and everything? That's awesome. Right. Very cool. Nice. So what's next on our list? Let me, what, let me what's like, did you have to keep yourself from trying to change anything since, like, you're seeing it? Did you have to, like, hold back? Like, you, because usually you're able to, like, you get I the hands in the... Right. <laughs> but that's because I, I don't want it to be my story. It's their story. Sure. So um, I try to make recommendations and let them decide yeah. the route to take on certain things. Uh, it, it, again, like even with my own stuff, and you guys have spoken to Brian and Jay and, and even Dan, I, I give them a lot of leniency because I want stories being told by different people, not just me. I mean, I, I came up with a concept, which is great. And that's like one of those dreams come true, right? When we were kids to come up with our own yeah. thing. Yeah. Sure. But having everybody's ideas being poured into it is, is really what makes it great. That's cool. So you after that the intro. Oh. What's up? You were starting to transition. Yeah, I was gonna gonna let you keep going. <laughs> yeah, we got a ninja coming. Do we? Oh, no, we ninja. don't. We have a doctor coming, don't we? We got a doctor? Oh, okay. The doctor do- doctor's have- on the page. <laughs> Ah, see, I'm looking on the website. It has Ninja Gaiden, and then Doctor Wilder. So this graphic has Doctor. That graphic is right. The graphic is law. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to tell you for so long. <laughs> so Doctor Wilder, uh, which we talked about, Brian on the book, Umberto Giampa is the artist on that, who's a really great artist. Um, He's actually the artist on Volume Two and Volume Three of Devil's Dominion, which is coming out. Nice. And okay. You'll cool. see a really phenomenal job. On yeah. It. Uh, the uh, the colorist on Doctor Wilder is Martina Rossi. I really like her color work. Um, and we basically the, the concept is it's a team that um, Deja Wilder is the main character who's on the cover, but she has a team that she's built that. He is hired to investigate corruption around the world and about things about animals that, that are going extinct. They're passing them off as clones. Uh, they are clones, but they're passing them off as the real animals. Excuse me. Uh, so it's, people have compared it. Me and Brian have actually talked about it like a Ace Ventura meets G.I. Joe kind of thing. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was really well done. Um, again, Umberto's a fantastic artist. And Brian, again, with developing the characters, really great. Um, we had Rebecca Childs, who helped write the story at first. Uh, but she didn't have her schedule. was just, I guess, busy and couldn't help us write all the issues. So Brian, you know, jumped in and, and nailed it. So he did a great job on that. Nice. Yeah, I don't know anything about Rebecca Chell. Is this the first time you had, like, you hired someone and just didn't work out because of scheduling? Uh, you know, well, I uh, thought she was doing more like um, screenwriting, is my understanding. So uh, I tried that out using a screenwriter. Um, so I've worked with screenwriters twice. It was, I think it was Rebecca and actually uh, Dead Detective. The person on that does a lot of that. So, Which, which also is... Uh, is uh, a, a comic writer is associated with that as well. So did did they take over, or they just kind of wrote a screenplay treatment and then they? For Dead Detective, he wrote 
he wrote the scripts and he wrote um like a, what they call as a bible basically sure uh, series bible right. yeah Nice, nice, nice. Todd had to go real quick, so I'm going to kill time because he's the only one to control the graphics. So we got, we got to wait for just a second. But I, I really like the Dr. Wilder concept. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of um, animal rights comic books that that are done well, right? Like more normally they're like, we're going to do this one shot for a foundation, you know, and it's normally like some random hero that's – very poorly put together, beating up some random supervillain who's very poorly put together, right. and the benefits go to the American Wildlife Service Association or whatever. Right? Right. <laughs> so it was well done. Even one of the reviews, they said that they liked it so much, and they were like, "When you read it, it's not like over the top animal rights. It's like on the DL, basically." So they appreciated the way it was delivered. Um, well, even the covers, right? You don't even have animals on the covers, really, right? Um, I think on the va- some of the variants, I believe. Okay, okay, uh, but on the main covers, there it's just you know the looks like badass chicks doing shit, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think we did. Um, I think on each cover, we tried putting in one of the teammates at least. Right. Nice. So, like issue two, I think was Macy. Issue three, um, I can't remember who was on three, but three, four, and then five has like the last member of the team. That was a nice way to like introduce them on the cover that way. And this way each cover kind of looked different. You know what I mean? It gave it a different vibe. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. Now it's time for the ninja, right? Is that what your graphic says? Yes. <laughs> now it's ninja time. So Ninja Kaidan, written by Eric Palicki. It was fantastic. Great, great, great guy. Uh, uh, Lucas Mayer. So if you're not familiar with Lucas, he's working for DC comics right now. He was working on Titans blood and a couple of others right now. I don't remember which one, which title he's on. He was working with, I think punchline and uh, some other stuff. So he, he, he's been busy. Um, so I wasn't, I wasn't able to get him back for volume two for now. And the, the artist who worked on devil's dominion volume one is actually working on volume two of Ninja Kaidan. Oh, neat. And, and it's just it's such a good transition from lucas to Raphael. they just they really knock it out of the park with the art so nobody will be disappointed at all cool it's really coming out great and there's gonna be some new characters like you know being introduced on volume two but part one let's tell everybody what it's about basically his father owns a corporation that um builds the suit that allows them to interact with ghosts um, and his father passes away, the son takes over the company, puts the suit on, and he ends up fighting these ghosts and eventually sees his father again. Um, so I, I think it's a really um, great way that Eric introduces um, not only the main character, but um, the one that works with him, and he develops a relationship with her. And we had some jokes about things that he wrote in the book with socks you, you you could talk to him about that but uh i i thought the art was phenomenal and the colorist did a great job i mean i, I love the way the, the ghosts looked um there is going to be a connection ninja kaidan with a few other titles um and they make perfect sense and you'll see why when that comes out um but it's a five issue arc we did have a couple of we didn't talk about it earlier but we have a few of them that were a different number of issues like cyclist was six issues right everything else that i did was five and ninja kaidan i believe the first volume was i think it was um i think it was three issues and, and volume two had four issues hmm. yeah. That's I, I mean this is uh the in my opinion this is the one that most people started really talking about your company um, like a lot of people were sharing this around and design and stuff like that. Um, I think people really got into that um, w- with with good reason. You know, it, uh, it's definitely a, one of your one of my favorites of your your titles. Yeah, it was a big hit for us for sure. Yeah. And Jin, by the way, Jin Hunter and Devil's Dominion were in the top ten that CBR had indie. Nice. Um, so that's I thought cool. that was pretty cool to make that list because not too many indies make the top ten. Yeah, that's awesome. Right? That's really cool. 
And the next. The master? Dream app. Yes. The the best design of a character, in my opinion, that you have. Like, this design is so good. He's so fun. Yeah. No, I love that character, man. I mean, that's a, that's a great character for us. But Ninja Kaidan and that were like back-to-back home runs for us. I mean. Right, yeah. <laughs> just constantly, we were running to the post office, mailing out shipments. Uh, shops were reordering. Um, so that that was a really big hit for us, the two of them. Um, and Jonathan I, is a great writer. And obviously, you saw what Luigi did. Um, not, I mean, the covers were wraparound covers. I don't know if you saw them, but... Yeah, they were amazing. All five were wraparound covers, but the amount of detail that he put in, and he loves the character. And uh, he, they're excited. We're working on volume two right now. We finished uh, issue six, uh, and then me and Jonathan are working on volume three. Uh, we just had a call about it, so he started. He's getting ready for volume three. He's ready awesome. to. That's so cool. something to give everybody. Let them know that it's continuing. Yeah, that's excellent. Nice. Uh, and then, uh, what's it about? So. I mean, the easiest way to explain it for people is the reverse of Freddy Krueger, which that's not where the concept came from. I was just like in nightmares. I'm like, it'd be cool to have someone who could run with you and, and kind of handle business. Right. And uh, but that's an easy way to look at it. It's just like the reverse of Freddy. But there's some magic going on and he could take you from from one nightmare to the other. And no, no place is safe. Right. They, I mean, the nightmares could follow you anywhere. Um, uh, so he, he's basically just trying to save everybody and anything that goes on in these dreams or nightmares can affect them in the real life. It's really, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's really, do you know that, um, Nightmare on Elm Street 4 is called the dream master and, um, it's about, uh, you know, the kids learning how to fight back with Freddy and like controlling their dreams. It's really interesting that you say that and it's lined up with that. Because I do, was that intentional or just no, no. No. <laughs> that's my favorite nightmare on Elm Street. That's the only reason why I know that. So, because everyone likes. But you like Dream Master better, all right? <laughs> of course, of course. He's, he's not a pedophile. So that's what I like about him. Um, <laughs> Freddy's a pedophile. You can't what really. A, like, what, I can't what a, fully what a ever brave and controversial uh, opinion. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, Travis Gibb is anti pedophile. Wow. wow. Publicly. <laughs> publicly. Are commenting, oh, somebody to mess up Freddy finally. You know, like, I, I think <laughs> that would be a fun battle to see. That would be cool. Well, I mean, they got the rights back, so I mean, it's not not hard to tell that the creators have the right back rights back as Newland. Yeah, I mean, you know. it's something to approach for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that would uh, definitely be fun if they could do that. That'd be cool. Yeah, this is, and I told Jonathan this, uh, and he was very upset by it because you know, obviously, he likes his creator own stuff. I was like, this is the best thing you've written. He was not a fan of me saying that. <laughs> <laughs> But he he loves he definitely loves the book though. Oh, he loves the character. I mean, he was the one you know. He has the mini bust, and you know he's got the banner. You know he loves the character. Yeah. He's he's embraced it fully. Oh yeah. You know? And you ever see he got the Funko Pop? Yeah, the Funko Pop. Yeah, with the, the painting. Yeah. That's cool. He has stickers. I mean, he has everything, and 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 I appreciate the enthusiasm he has for the character, and and the same thing with the guys who are working on it, like Luigi Baricelli, Ruben Curto. They couldn't wait to jump back on to volume two That's and awesome. they're super excited and i'm excited and we're bringing in some new people who are the dreamers and definitely going to be something different for sure uh, uh we'll in, in, be introducing a new villain so that that'll be also uh, a nice fun thing to play with uh, so yeah jonathan's gonna he's gonna be challenging luigi and that's what i asked him to do and, and i think he did in volume one i mean at first yeah. When he wrote the first script, I don't think he knew Luigi's skill set yet. Mm. Um, but by the time he got to issue two, he he really upped the game, and you can see what goes on in volume two, uh, issue yeah. two. Issue two is real good. <laughs> uh, oh yeah! Anytime you get our back, and you're like, "Oh, this is better than I wrote." I I need to up my game. <laughs> That's a crazy issue. Yeah. So. Uh, they're having a lot of fun working together so it, it, it's a lot of fun and, and i'm actually working I, 
I mean, I hope it works out, but I'm work, trying to work on a 3D printed figure of Dream Master. Nice. Very nice. Hopefully we get that soon, too. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ho- hopefully I'm, I'm, I'd like to get that. You know, I know you do Kickstarter periodically. I think the Kickstarter market will really resonate with that one. Um, you know, because you've got Jonathan's a, a decent, has a decent following over there. And I think it'll, it'll do really well if you've got some extra cool stuff like figures and stuff like that to throw on. I, I've done a couple of Kickstarters. Um, I, I don't really focus on them. I probably should focus a little more on them. Uh, mo- most of them, though, what I did was the trades. So right, exactly. I do like a variant of the trade basically on there because the trades are really expensive. Yeah. So it, it helps kind of balance out costs and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But I really haven't done single issues except for Bigs and Tiny number one. That was the only one that I did on, on Kickstarter. No, I, I was meaning the trade. I think the, the Dream Master trade going there, I think it would do really well. Yeah. Get that audience. I think I think the audience would, would really dig it. Because uh, it's a complete. A lot of people don't realize that the Kickstarter audience is almost completely different than the comic sto- it's, store audience. It's their comic like a lot of people have my Kickstarter will never go to comic stores. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they'll just. Yeah, buy I would Kickstarter. say the majority, like easily over ninety percent, I don't think is the same market. No, yeah, yeah. it's their comic so, shop. Right, but I I can empathize with that. And, and a good thing about that is a lot of creators, uh, especially indie do support each other and that's nice to see within um because you see it on twitter all the time one one creator supported the other creator and that's that's nice to see everybody supporting each other like that yeah Yeah. it is it's nice when everybody empathizes with each other yeah well and we we get it right we get that this you know getting this book printed or helping you offset that you know allows you to make another book you know if we want to keep that community healthy we've got to keep allowing that to do it because most people quit because they just can't afford it anymore It's not because they didn't want to do it. They didn't have the passion. It's just, I cannot afford to lose money anymore. Mm-hmm. Like I'm done. Yeah. It's, <laughs> off market, man. it's it's really pricey. Um, but our job is to give you quality. Right. And yeah. I feel like we do that again, like with the writers, the artists, the, the quality of the paper that we talked about, like all that. So yeah, you do great stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is not a single writer who you've mentioned, who you've worked with on the writer side. And I've seen all the art. That's great. Who I don't think is, is top tier worthy of working with. Mm-hmm. Right. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I'll yeah. let them know. Don't, don't, don't. They'll, they'll all get egos, especially Brian Hawkins. Like, yeah. You can't tell him. Yeah. I've had to stop complimenting that guy. I, I've never met Brian in person. I mean, I, we, we've talked, but I never met him. Uh, I met Jonathan for the first time in, uh, at Heroes Con. Nice. And, uh, That's cool. Let me see who else, if I've met anyone else. I, met- I don't think Jay does cons, so you haven't probably haven't met Jay. Eric does cons, but they're all West Coast, so you probably you haven't been to the West Coast. Eric right? Palicki, he was at New York. That was the first time I met him, the one that just passed. And I also met uh, one of my variant cover artists, Tiago Da Silva. Yeah. He's done some amazing covers for us. Uh, I met him uh, last year at New York Comic Con. Uh, nice. And then I met him again this year. I saw him. That's cool. Real nice guy. I can't say empathize again because I, I was trying, I was trying to, I got yeah. it. I got it. so I'm just going to say, <laughs> here's the next one. <laughs> Empath. Oh man. So Brian and Deborah Carita. So Deborah's done some kind of unique work that I've seen. She's done stuff for call of duty. Okay. Uh, something for Fortnite that she did, I believe it might have been like a something for, I guess, advertising. It was like a big poster that I saw her that she was holding on to, um, and she's done stuff for some other indies. Um, so she she she's got some really good skills, and she did. Uh, I mean, I'm holding it, but hey. she did not just the pencil and inks, but she also did the colors on all of the covers. That's cool. Oh wow! Uh, and uh, issues. Uh, I believe one and two was CC de la Cruz on colors, and then we had to change colorists. Uh, but Deborah did a fantastic job on art, uh, telling the story. Uh, and again, Brian with developing characters, man, he just does the street level like so good. Um, and we did trailers for all of these. I don't know if you guys saw the trailers, they're all on our YouTube channel. Oh, cool! I think we do pretty cool, fun trailers. Neat. Uh, I'll check those out. But empath is just basically like, you know, we all have people we feel for. It could be our friend, our, our brother, sister. 
that we empathize with. And uh, <laughs> that was for you, Tony. <laughs> Their level um, within this series. So when he's like touching them, basically, he really drains a lot of their energy. So if the person he's fighting with, it's a villain and they're angry and he ends up absorbing it and he has to kind of deal with that in real life. Right. So now he's angry and he's got all this energy that he's got to use up. Um, and it takes a toll on you. Right. Like, I mean, if, if, if you get angry, I'm sure at some point you probably feel a little bit exhausted afterwards. Right. Mm-hmm. So it, it's really like a, a magnified a, a hundred times, you know, uh, and there's not like over the top super villains or anything like that. Um, it's a, just like a realistic take for the most part, but it does have that much higher heightened sense of the empathy piece. Yeah. I like it a lot. Cause I tend to over empathize with everything in my life. I can't use that word no more. Yeah. Oh yeah. I tend to feel <laughs> the feelings around me too much yeah. and the gravity of situations. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it affects me to, it, it used to affect me a, a ton and I've gotten a lot better with, you know, talking to people, professionals and otherwise. Um, but I really love this book because it, it, I don't know. It's, it's probably the, the most seen I've felt in a comic book. It kind of, I felt a little called out, but I was like, Oh, they're handling it pretty well. Um, <laughs> And it's really great. I really enjoyed it. I, I went into it completely blind. I saw Hawkins and Empath and Black Box. And I was like, I don't need to know what this is about. Get this for me, please, Don. And he was like, okay. <laughs> and uh, it's it's really good. I really enjoy it. Yeah, I'm so excited you, for more. You know how it ends and everything on issue one. And mm-hmm. that kind of basically what I was explaining, you know, yeah. what, what all that it takes on you. So I thought it was an interesting way to finish off the first issue Mm -hmm. and then number two we talked about this it's it's tomorrow right i'm excited i'm excited to see how this goes terribly wrong yeah (laughs) i'm I'm actually um almost done with volume two so awesome very cool same creative team um no it's a it's same writer uh different artist okay just the artist. Uh, De- Deborah was uh, scheduled for something else, um, so I, th- I think we just caught her too late when we started, and um, I ended up going with someone else um, for the time being. But maybe in the future we'll work with her again, or maybe she'll do volume three. Who knows? Sure. Now, now, do you green write the next volumes when you're feeling the vibe of the scripts, or do you wait to the first orders of diamond? When do when do you decide the the green light for the ne- ne- next one? I mean, it's just. As it's going, right? Like, as it might be issue three, four, or five. I mean, it all depends. But depending on the vibe of the team, how well they're working together, um, how much they nailed the concept, uh, and just like the feeling you get as you're reading it to see, like, this has a lot of potential. We go a lot of different ways with this. And, um, you know, I, I just felt like that's a character that could be very, very relatable to people not just who like comics but people who don't like comics right and i think one unique thing that black box has is that we have titles that could capture people who have never read comics right so empath it cyclist militia i think those are grounded type of books that could draw someone in Mm -hmm. that's cool yeah for sure and then the last on the graphic list I have a feeling there's probably more. Yeah, we should probably investigate this one, right? Oh, hey. Uh, <laughs> I, I figured out the game, hey, John. Wait, I figured it out. Stop beating this horse to death. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like a dead detective. <laughs> yeah, so dead detective. Um, I don't want to ruin too much. It's obviously going to be out tomorrow, Wednesday, whatever the official new comic book day is. Hmm. Uh, they both go out on a case to investigate. One of them dies, and they 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 meet up again in purgatory, basically. Nice. And I don't want to spoil too much. I don't want to say how. I don't want to say what. Yeah. But um, they don't see each other for quite a while, and and they meet up, and they end up trying to continue the case to figure out who did that, who killed them. 
um, and, you know, build on their relationship and the case and then how it ends and how it's going to continue. There'll be some other stuff that'll be cool about that and how it connects to the rest of the black box world. Nice. That's very cool. Who is, so who is this writer? So this is the first time you've got to a point where I don't know this writer in any way. Too before. cutting edge for you, Travis. Sure he's a screenwriter though. So I met him and he's a screenwriter. And um, I thought like when you read, the scripts and the series Bible, I mean, the way he described the world, the way he did everything for us of what we wanted, uh, he did such a great job at that. Uh, but he's a screenwriter, so it's a little different than being a comic writer. Uh, sure. So it, it, it made it where it was a little challenging for the artist, Fabio Lima Jansen's the artist on it. And Fabio did a fantastic job telling that story with the things that were like a little bit different from a typical comic writer. Right. Um, so he had a little bit of a, a, definitely a challenge for him, but he, but he knocked it out of the park. Man. I mean, I, I thought the world was great. The, the world building, uh, the vibe, he, a little bit of that, I don't know, Bernie Wrightson, Kelly Jones type of world yeah. vibe. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just enjoyed his art throughout and, um, uh, they, it ended up being really good. Um, uh, and I, and I'm, I'm excited about, connecting these things with the other titles sweet yeah a lot of people can be in purgatory <laughs> so uh. the, idea of, <laughs> the idea of the purgatory here which you'll you'll see i'll give you a little spoiler is when everyone dies they die with that let's say wound or whatever it was sure so you you, you go there just the way you left interesting neat doesn't sound great depending on how you yeah say that could be real bad <laughs> that wood chipper accident was not great for me <laughs> <laughs> interesting for comics though right yes <laughs> so before we ask you so we have a series of questions that we ask every creator uh every you know the first publisher but every publisher that's been on <laughs> every publisher <laughs> Um, we, we ask a series of questions, but before we do that, is there any other books that you want to talk about upcoming in 2024 that you may not have graphics for? They don't want to show anything on that you want to kind of talk about? Well, I mean, I did mention Devil's Dominion volume two and three will come out. Yeah. So that, that's going to be big for us. Uh, she, she is definitely, I would say one of the main characters in, in our universe, right? Devlin. And, and we've built a lot around her and you'll see how others, are connected to her, but uh, we have something that we did for a younger audience. And I, that was something I always wanted to do, but it's just, those weren't the things that were popping in my head to do immediately, right? So <laughs> I, I don't want to force things. I, I want to think of something. Um, and I ended up working with Jay Sandlin on this, the writer on Biomex. Um, and he, he helped come up with a lot of the stuff um, on, on on this series. So I, I, I relied a lot on him to develop this. And, um, you know, he's a big fan of, like, Transformers, Gundam, Robotech, uh, as well as I am. And it's kind of along those, those lines a little bit, but maybe mixed a little bit of, like, Mega Man or something like that, if you want. Right. Uh, but definitely a younger audience, but I think – he wrote it in a way that an older audience would definitely enjoy it. Um, really detailed art. Colors came out great. Um, and we did get two Transformers artists that did variant covers for us. One is uh, Olivio Ramondelli that was on Transformers for, I believe, on IDW. Nice. And also Chris Batista. Uh, he worked on Transformers back when Marvel had it, when it was yeah. uh, Transformers and G.I. Joe, I believe. That was the series that he did. Cool. And I thought he did a really great job on that series. So I thought it was cool to have those, one from more old school and new school, kind of do the band. Yeah, that's neat. That's yeah. really cool. There's a guy in my network called Jay Lugo who did did some Transformers stuff. You know what's up? He's very affordable, too. Okay. I'll check him out. Or send it to me. Send me a link if you have. Yeah, I'll send you a link. Yeah, I'll check it out. Um, I don't know if you're, so uh, you got that and uh, what else, anything else or is that all you want to announce? We, right we now? recently just got on Global Comics. I'm not sure how familiar you all are, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a really good platform. I mean, uh, so far we like it. 
Um, I think we got a lot of new followers from it, um, different people. So comicology just changed. And I know a lot of people are not that happy with how it turned out. Yeah. That's a big bummer. Yeah. And, and we were on there, but we have to re upload, I guess. So when they transferred, they didn't transfer everything over. So we have to re upload everything again there. Neat. Um, <laughs> so we have to decide if it's even if worth doing even because do of the way that whole thing is going right now. Yeah, that's fair. I didn't do it the last time they asked me to do it. I was the last, a couple of years ago. They were like, Hey, you need to re upload. Nope. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this uh, there's so many other players in the game, and Global Comics jumped in right at the right time. I mean, they were really blowing up. They got a lot of, uh, the, I think they got Image and a few other mm-hmm. big publishers. I believe Boom, maybe. Uh, so they're they're doing great. You know, uh, that that was a good time for them to jump in and, and really focus on the comic market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and they do treat uh, you know the people we have coming next week as band of bards, and they they treat them really well. I know that these small publishers they're really treating them just as big as they are their image or their boom and all their stuff. Yeah, so. they're very responsive. If you email them, you'll get a response pretty quickly and thorough. Um, so that's good. I mean, even though they've been overwhelmed probably lately, uh, they're still yeah. you know responding and then helping out. So that's good. That's cool. That's good to hear. Nice. Sweet. All right. You ready for the questions, Todd? Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask them to you. Not Perfect. Me. I will answer for Demetrius. <laughs> All right. We have a series of questions that we ask every creator who comes on here. Um, there, It's four questions. It ends up being three half the time because the fourth one is, depending on how well you answer three, four may not be useful. Depending on how extensive you get. <laughs> All right. um, are you ready, good sir? Yes. No, no. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you think makes Black Box stand out in the comic book market? Um, I think what I was kind of saying before, the uniqueness of the titles. I mean, I think they reach out to people who don't read comics typically, and I think we get to bring in a new audience, and that's, I think, beneficial to everybody. Um, I think that um, the characters are developed in a way that people can relate to. And um, the concepts, like uh, like I was saying, right? So like I was saying, like, IT, financial banking, which is basically one of the biggest industries in the world, right? right. Militia, military, also one of the biggest industries in the world. And then cyclist, which is kind of about mental health. Um, so if you're including it in the pharmaceutical, medical industry, biggest one of the biggest also. Um, so I, I think that's something that just a lot of people could relate to and jump into and want to find out about. Yeah, hundred percent. Good answer. Uh, so we we touched a little bit on like the transition and like how you handled moving into comics, but when you hit speed bumps, when whether it be personal or business and things, just it becomes difficult to do this. And for one reason or other, what what keeps you going? What helps you push through, or what do you do to push through it? I mean, I, I really enjoy what I do, so there's no giving up to me. It's just you got to just keep plowing away until you get to where you want to be. Um, you know, if there's an issue, I, you know, always have to put it on the table and discuss it with whoever I need to, if it's with the writer because of the story or the artist because of the art. Um, and, you know, part of it is choosing the right people that you can work with, and I've been able to do that. Um, so you get the end result of what you want, you know, and I think everybody's happy at the end of the day. Nice. Yeah. hundred percent. All right. Uh, what does leveling up in comics look like for you? So what would, you know, is it just sales or, or is it picking pick one of your ones picked up by a movie? What is black box kind of leveling up uh, to be, you know, Top, one of the top tier uh, publishing. What, what, what do you need to do to level up? I think there's multiple levels, right? Like you're just constantly growing, whether it's like sales. So let's say uh, from what I was told by one of the distributors, most indies might sell between 500 and 800. Right. We surpassed that a long time ago. And we're, we're easily over 5,000 on, on an issue. Uh, so like, the sales are one thing and then the other thing is everybody 
when you talk to other indie publishers, it wants to be noticed, right? So the good thing is when people start writing about you and we have a bunch of like um, the smaller networks that were writing about us and, and that was cool and I was getting the word out and then you had some of the bigger ones and then you had some YouTubers finding out about us, then CBR. So, it, you know what I mean? It's like not that one better than the other, but each one has its own audience or a bigger audience and that is part of leveling up in a, in a sense. Yeah. Uh, the ultimate level up, obviously, is to get like a movie or a show. I mean, that's something we all want because uh, sure. that just gives you a reach for another audience um, to tell things maybe in a different way. You have you might have more time doing it um, and just maybe other resources and, and other minds involved. So that would be a great experience to get to that point. Um, we are pitching to a lot of studios, so we're already like you know basically at the door um uh, i think it's just a matter of time really awesome very cool what do you what do you want uh last question that's the that's the big level up what do you want your next level up to be i'm sorry i couldn't hear you oh, what do you want your next level up to be um i'm ready for a movie or a show that's the next <laughs> one all right sweet no i like it <laughs> I'm ready for it, man. I mean, um, like we, we've got to meet a lot of people within the industry, uh, screenwriters, producers, directors, um, even actors, uh, a lot of executives that I've spoken to. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I look forward to, to that for sure. Uh, I think that's one of it, but I mean, we talked also about like the, the universe. So I think from strictly in a comics point of view, I think the universe piece would be really cool to have some of those crossovers and, and, and do it little by little, right? Like, just like I said, have the cameos and build the relationships, not just go right into just some massive big event that doesn't make any sense or why we even did that, you know, but I, tidbit. I would love to, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 continue. Sorry, sorry, no, no, sorry. I was done. <laughs> I got excited. I got excited. <laughs> I would love, to, I would love for your company to do like an annual. I think it. you have so many titles that we don't get to see and in, in development for so long, you know, seeing little cameos, little stories in an annual once a year would, I think would be perfect for black. Yeah. Just I, I annual. Something like that. That would be cool. Yeah. Something to think about for sure. An annual would be good. Yeah. Yeah, just until you can, you know, until you can properly mix them, you know, get little short, you know, eight page stories or 10 page stories, you know, together. I mean, that's it. one of the challenges is like, can you get a book in every single month, another series, another issue, another issue? And at some point, yeah. you know, you get kind of stuck and you got to like take a break and develop the next five or 10, whatever you're going to do. Yeah. And I took a little bit of a break, like, like I said, Devil's Dominion, but I got 10 issues ready to go. So. Very cool. That's awesome. So I'm excited to to release that. Excellent. I'm excited for you to release that. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thank uh, you so much, Demetrius. Thanks for leveling us up. Cool. No, I appreciate it, guys. And I, I hope I answered the questions well for you. Yeah, 100%. No wrong answers. Well, I do like I, pass, I, though. I'm waiting for pass. I'm waiting for the first real pass. <laughs> <laughs> the real Just, pass? No. No. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm excited. Uh, if you're watching this and you don't know about Black Box, please check out a title. Oh, yeah. All of our friends. Yeah, this is one of the. Ooh, hey. That's the wraparound for uh, issue one of Dead Detective. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. So I was sitting here just packing a couple I got to mail out tomorrow. Nice. Nice. nice, nice. So, do, you, uh, do you mail it? If it's on the website, you can order it, even if it's not in the comic store yet. Right. So nice. But it, it gets mailed out, you know. Mm around the date that it's in store because sure. it's gotta be obviously fair to the stores um which yeah. the shops are awesome and they've been so supportive and the number like i said the numbers just keep growing with the sales so that shows that they like what we have and they're just they're selling it well so awesome a big good thing to hear. Yeah. yeah man i know my comic store gets five of every every issue of your your stuff, so which is good. That's just like any indie. It's higher yeah. than most indies. I'm I'm happy with a small indie getting that. That's that's great. Yeah. I mean, I, I have some shops that order 100 or 150, which is crazy. Wow, that's awesome. Nice. That's awesome. That's, awesome. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. Love that. So I think that is a wrap, Todd. Oh, okay. Uh, I am gonna remember what I did last time. 
and because I always forget Granite State Punk. You got <laughs> yeah. 24 hours, uh, just at the 24 hour mark. So if you uh, are a fan of my work, please back GranitestatePunk.com on Kickstarter. The Coven, this is the, you'll get it before Scout gets it. Scout will get it till March. But if you want it in January, get it now. I got to check that out. Please, please, please. It's, uh, it's, my best title. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest. It's my favorite thing. Oh, it's my favorite thing. I the thing that you did, um, what was it, in October for the drawing that everybody was drawing a character? Yeah, the, we do that every year, um, and we'll make sure our black box character is involved every year from now on. Inktober? Yeah, we do that every Ink, uh, Indie-tober. Indie-tober, yeah. That was a lot of fun seeing Dream Act. Yeah, that was cool. Well, what's good about it is not just the people drawing and stuff is, is so many people have got cover gigs or they've bought even the ink. They bought, bought the page and do it. My uh, cover for breaking edge number two was literally someone drawing it in the group. I was like, Hey, yeah. can you add a little bit more detail so I can make that a cover? Like it's almost there. Like, can we, can we add a little bit more? I'll pay you. And like, uh, that's what I love about it is people get jobs and then the people find out about these characters. They have to go to your website and research them, right? right. So if they didn't know who Dream Master was, they had to go to your website because all I do is give them a couple of images, right. you know? So, so no problem. Absolutely. That's very cool. Okay. Thanks uh, again excellent. for everything, man. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate all the support from your shop and your reading and picking them up. And I know, Travis, you've been a fan for a while too. So I appreciate it, guys. Well, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. All right, we've leveled up to We have officially. Bye.